Hello everyone. <coughs> Today, Quality QHSA Concepts channel is bringing to you the short presentation on Jacob rigs, how to understand the Jacob rig. If someone is new, someone is an engineering student and a mechanical student, engineering, mechanical, electrical, and so many, you know, various disciplines people are doing engineering and also people in the industry who are not offshore background. They must know what are Jacob bricks, how these are, you know, put in, put together in the vast uh, uh, shipyards. And then uh, one will understand what kind of job happens offshore as well with this presentation. So let's begin this. Uh, you will understand what is a Jacob rig in this presentation, what types of Jacob rigs are there, because there are some various types of. What is, what is the history behind these Jacobs? Then the pioneers, who are the early pioneers in this industry? Then the you know typical system of you know legs uh, jacking system because this is a very special kind of a vehicle, and uh, there are special uh, systems in this uh, Jacobs. I being of the marine background and I have an experience of building Jacob rigs, so I have quite a bit of knowledge in this matter, and I head the quality department. So uh, in my department we have all the kinds of uh, disciplines like piping, structural, electrical, mechanical. And obviously we have those in lead engineers and inspectors. So it's a very big system. And then I would love to take this, uh, you know, to learn to teach about rigs. So what is a Jacob rig? A Jacob rig is a vessel that or a hull that has legs and a jacking mechanism. So why do we need legs actually? So in offshore, what happens? You can make your vessel stand for some time, but then the vessel is, you know, con continuously shaking. And if you wish to do any job or any kind of work in an adjacent uh, oil and gas module, or let's say it's uh, uh, you want to install something, or even let's say you want to uh, do the uh, installation of the wind turbines these days, and then there is something to do with the blades, there's some repair work to be done. So many of these things can be done if the, it is stable in one place. So they will do. The legs will go down in the bottom of the ocean and touch the seabed and then it is jacked up. So this is the entire vessel uh, main deck uh, along with all the you know engine and everything. The entire hull will be coming up from the water uh, table and it will be like you know suspended in the mid air. So during the you know the vessel is brought up and down in the water and that is called as jacking mechanism. And this is done because it has four legs and uh, that these are the very high strength steel, uh, usually 690 KSI material. And to weld that material also, there are special WPS, it's a special welding process. And uh, there is not a part of discussion for this today's uh, video. So jacking mechanism allows raising and lowering of the legs when the hull is afloat. So that's what we, I told you. So this jacking mechanism, can also raise the hull out of water with the leg resting on the seabed. That's what it does basically. And when you see the photographs and you will understand this concept very well. So types of jacket bricks. So there is civil and marine industry construction platforms. So, you know, the, as I told you, the oil platforms uh, need a lot of work to be done for its commissioning and, you know, shutdowns. So during that time, this rigs will go and, you know, stand besides it. And it, these rigs also have uh, uh, 200 to you know, 150 to 200 mm, capacity of uh, persons to stay on board so that accommodation they can use and then they can go to the next uh, oil and gas platform do the job there and come back and sleep in the accommodation this also has a large deck space where all the work can be done it also has a crane which can help doing the job uh, this is i'm talking about lift boat but if you see drilling rigs drilling rigs are different than normal uh, lift boats so drilling rigs are doing drilling on the offshore uh, platforms so that also we will see in some few examples so drilling rigs or accommodation rigs and production rigs are the three kinds of you know uh, what uh, jacob rigs are out there so you can see this uh, photograph and you can see in the photograph that there is a vessel which is having the hull then there are four legs then there is something called a jack house and then where the, the jacking system equipments are there which help the entire boat to go up and down 
then the, there is a large deck space and there is a large crane which went, which can help you know in doing the job on the main deck and then there is an accommodation there it can be 150 person on board it can be 200 person on board 225 depends on the size of the complexity of the vessel there is a helipad and then there is a uh, hull and everything so this is a typical uh, construction platform it can help a lot of work in the construction platform comes to the uh, slide on uh, drilling rig now drilling rigs are quite common because you know offshore you need to find the oil first by drilling so what happens is the drilling rig will go and uh, when an offshore platform is installed you can see the yellow color there this will have conductors where the you know, drilling can happen so it may have 24 conductors 16 conductors and so forth so this jackup can exactly go on top of that offshore platform and the drilling bit can go exactly through the conductor and through the seabed and start drilling so when it the oil is found in that uh, drilling rig obviously this bit is removed and that uh, conductor is capped and then naturally the oil production can start at the later stage so this is a typical three leg uh, jacket you, you are seeing sorry a three leg uh, rig you are seeing in this you can see accommodation legs hull jack house can the cantilever the cantilever is a place which where all the drilling bits and the drilling equipments are completely you know uh, made a module sort of so people who are doing the drilling are going to come here you, you must have seen a typical drilling guys videos those are the, the thing which happens in that derrick and cantilever area so this you can see a typical accommodation rig so this rig will go wherever the accommodation of the people is required there is some small jobs can also be done in this but mainly this is used for accommodation now this is a production rig a production rig is a rig which can produce um, oil, you know or separate oil this is not basically for doing any oil production basically it's only for separation and storage in the tanks and then it can be offloaded there are some process equipments on board so it will do a very uh, you know limited uh, separation of oil and sand and all the sediments and uh, so so depending on the process of, of oil it can be you know this these rigs are usually designed so this is you can see a production rig uh, besides a production platform how it works and then how it usually sees yeah, how you can easily visualize this so you can see this is some some example of drilling rig and production rig uh, side by side to each other so drilling rigs you know early oil exploration I, we will now cover a few uh, few slides on history so early oil exploration sent and tender assisted platforms post posted barges, submersible jackups. We will cover these kind of items now. You can see this is Baku in, and in Baku late 19th century, usually the early rigs used to look like this oil exploration. I used to happen like this. It's to be a very, very, you know, uh, environmentally degrading job. But these days they are doing it, you know, you know taking into consideration the environment aspect as well. Now this one you can see is the onshore uh, drill, uh, rigs which are drilling for oil. You can see hundreds and hundreds of them. You can see the beaches of uh, Huntington and in the late 20s, 1920s. And then you can see behind those are all the rigs which are trying to remove the oil. So you can see the difference between Huntington Beach today and uh, those days. All those areas where those uh, rigs were there have now taken, uh, gone off and then they have made accommodation a living area residential area in that place so you can see this is uh, Summerlin in, in summerlands in california near the 1920s you can see how the beach was during that time completely taken over by the oil exploration companies of the united states and you can see today's uh, beach it's a very sea change you can see those rigs are gone now because obviously the oil is over and there, there is a city now with a lot of greenery and uh, you know, residential area. Here's another place in Venezuela, Lake Maracaibo. Maracaibo. So this is one of the Caspian Sea. This is offshore, of course. 
Caspian Sea, mid 20th century, early oil exploration in Caspian Seas. In Caspian Sea, you can now see, you know, uh, barges or reclaimed area, land reclaimed and built some accommodation and same time they're exploring oil as well. So you can see this platform is completely different than what modern day platform looks like. And you can see that this will be used for drilling and uh, exploration of oil. And then came something like this. There was a tender assisted drilling. So drilling tender barge uh, used to you know, go aside where there used to be a drilling requirement. But then of course they removed this barge and then they you know, made a four-legged uh, version later. So this is about 1946, how it used to look like. So another typical example of early posted barges. These are not used anymore because you know, technology has been improving due to continual improvement. And now you can see a different set as you saw in earlier slides. So John T. Hayward was the chief engineer of Bursnell Oil, Bunstill Oil, of course, if I'm spelling it right, when he invented the first semi-submersible Brenton 20 to work in protected waters up to 14 feet. So you can see the rigs are having the you know, capacity where they can go uh, you know, up to what height they can operate. And in 54, the first open water submersible, Mr. Charlie, was designed capable of water depth up to 40 meters, so 40 feet. So now they are going uh, even below the you know, earlier 14 feet. Now it was designed for 50, 40 feet. So within six years, they are improving the uh, improving, improvising on their design. Then Colonel Leon B. DeLong, during World War II, DeLong, <coughs> while in U.S. Army, designed a temporary platform for military use. After the war, he developed the concept of Jacob platform. In 1952, he formed the DeLong Corporation, which became a key producer of Jacob barges and drilling rigs for offshore industry. You can see a typical DeLong pneumatic jacking system here of 1952. Then F. Tim also came up with the Jack Rig 51. And you can see a lot of uh, legs here. I mean, this looks like a uh, eight leg ja Jacob. Oh, does look like two Jacobs side to each other. So in 54, offshore company launched by Rig 51, first mobile Jacob rig was using the long jacking system for up to 100 feet of depth. So from 50, 14 feet, they reached 100 feet. So they went even deeper in offshore. So by 1956, uh, RG de Long, uh, de uh, and we can see a lot of uh, letter or no design, uh, design Jacobs now these days operating in the water. So in 56, the first electric self elevating Jacobs Scorpion is designed and built for Zapata offshore company. First triangular concept that became the pattern for hundreds of rigs that followed. So the triangular three-legged version started and you can see the early spot cans, how simple in design they look and compared to what we have today is very complicated design. And you can see this, This, in fact, this design looks like a futuristic, uh, you know, boat. Coming to 1956, uh, the first bottle-shaped submersible rig 46 was built. This design evolved to operate in water's depth of up to 175 feet. So now they are going, you know, breaking the, within a few, within a decade, in fact, they came up to 175 feet. Then in 61, the first submersible Blue Water One was designed by Bruce G. Collip of Shell for Shell, the Shell Oil Company. Then in 65, Jacob Seagem started working in North Sea, a converted barge with 10 legs using the long jacking system. Now, oh, this is a very you know, interesting 10 leg concept. Very, I don't think this is quite that stable because you know so much jacking of legs and you have a lot of uh, room in this okay for doing the work but you can see that this may be a quite a safety would be a big concern here that's why we don't see these kind of things these days the first uh, british purpose-built uh, purpose submersible the sequest in north sea started operating by 1970s you can see this how it looked so early submersibles so you can see now the chart how from 14 feet they managed to go you know, the more than 150 feet and how the design has evolved. 
So from Britain, Rig 20 in 1949, the first submersible used to the triangular platform with bottles. You can see how the design have you know transformed. So from DeLong uh, uh, to Mr. Gus to Scorpion, the, you know, we have been going deeper in the water for exploration of oil. So let's see some mad jack support jackups. So designed for soft seabed, hydraulic jacking and pin jacking system and 250 water depth. So now we are talking about 250 water depth rating. So you can see the hull, tubular legs and mat. And you can see the mat here, it will go on the seabed and uh, you know, so stabilize the entire uh, rig. In this uh, slide, you can see the Gusto MSC Jacobs. And Gusto is a very prominent, very famous designer of uh, rigs these days. A lot of Gusto design barges are operating in a lot of water. So class water depth design environment, you can see from 250 feet up to 450 feet uh, designs are available in Gusto with variable loads from moderate to harsh environment. So the evolution of offshore drilling. So shore connected platforms, we had fixed independent platforms, tender assisted barges, and we have posted barges, some submersible and submersibles, which is having either independent legs or we had mat supported jackups. So in this slide, you can see fixed platform, jackup, semi-submersible, FPSO, FPSO is a different concept. It is floating, producing, storage, and offloading vessel. Basically, an old VLCC uh, vessel is converted, and there is a lot of uh, refining or, let's say, well to gas separation uh, on board uh, equipments. There are around 20 to 25 modules. There is even a flare stack. And just by typing FPSO on Google, you can see how it looks. It's a completely modern version. So where there are very shallow oil fields, where there is not much oil, and that is used for you know 10 years 20 years oil so this fpsos are used there tlps the tension leg platforms you can see they are going even deeper they look like submersibles but they are tlps actually so legs jacking so let's see the jacking system now so gripper jacking system you have jack and pin system you have rack and pinion system so you can see here upper gripper pneumatic jacks and lower gripper basically this is will you know grip the legs and it will release it uh, in a uh, controlled fashion so that the entire load of the deck can be taken uh, so these jacking systems are operating in a very high you know high pressure environment so you can see here up this kind of uh, jacking system has an upper pin hydraulic jack and then a lower pin and you can even see the slots inside the legs where the pin is going to you know stop the movement here you can see hydraulic jacking system because these days uh, in after 80s i think hydraulic will played an important part in uh, this kind of jacking this is rack and pinion uh, what i have worked in the barges lift boats i have seen the rack and pinion system so this kind of this is the jack house we were talking in earlier slides so in the jack house there is these uh, equipments uh, rack and pinion system jacking system is installed and then uh, you, even a person can go up there and monitor during the you know, jacking operation so you can see these legs these are the legs these is uh, you know constructed as i told you these uh, are 120 even up to 200 mm thickness plate these uh, ja jacket you can see a saw saw type uh, you know construction this jagged teeth these uh, plates are specially cut uh, I, I, what we've been working was from dillinger in germany used to cut these plates this is cutting is very special and you can see a small triangle in between and this triangle is actually uh, fabricated uh, so that the uh, adjacent tubulars and tky connections can be made so these uh, entire stuff is of 690 material to weld these uh, jacking legs is a very high precision job. So we have a special tandem uh, welding machine, SAW for this. 
and in our workshop and then they weld it with high precision there's a lot of care to be taken during welding because this is material is crack prone so if you don't maintain the interpass temperature or you don't do the post heating and post cooling cycle it obviously will develop cracks very easily so it's a very controlled cooling atmosphere uh, welding so of course that i will take uh, in another chapter or another video for that these are various sections of those TKY connection I was mentioning in my earlier slide. So you can see here how the rack and pinion system is working, how the teeth are aligned so that, you know, this is giving the jack up and jack down a very uh, accurate uh, kind of, uh, and but this is also very noisy. You, if you're doing the jacking up and jacking down operation, it will be a lot of noise will be there because, you know, these mechanical, uh, uh, gears are involved in this so and also we are talking about a, real, a lot of weight so there will be a lot of noise as well so that's about it i think we've covered almost everything with respect to jacking uh, jack up rigs there are certain further slides but i if time permits we will try to go through that as well Let's take the next slide. Back to the slide first. So here we were. So you can see this kind of jack up, which has an excavator as well. So because you know, maybe some, depending on the purpose, they are designing this. You can see here uh, a jack up used for jetty construction. So here, many jackups are used for salvage operations as well offshore. You can see a jackup used for salvage operation of a marine vessel. You can literally take the marine vessel up from its huge crane. These have 300 to 500 ton cranes, and you can put it on the main deck and you can simply uh, you know, drive the rig out of the area. These lattice structure legs supported by the mat is this is the example with a, of a drilling rig you can see the cantilever uh, rig uh, drilling in place this is another kind of design this is i think a process platform is there on the drilling rig uh, it is not a drilling rig it's just a rig with the process platform. You can see this rig is quite different in design. It's quite heavy in construction and it uses hydraulic jacking system. So these are the wind turbine, uh, you know, the, now these days offshore wind turbines are a lot of being installed. So a lot of lift boats like this are used for, you know, blade uh, uh, maintenance and, you know, even installation of these uh, uh, wind turbines. This is quite a different design as well. It's quite a sturdy design. You can see in the bottom, the so bottom of the ocean, they have already made these cemented structures on which the rig is going and uh, operating. So from 71 to 2012, you can see the rig deliveries uh, peaked during the 83. And after 83, there was a very big downturn up to 2004 and seven. And then the rig delivery again peaked in 2010 these days rig deliveries are you know uh, in a downturn again in this one shot you can see from uh, 1950s to uh, fpso development so this chart explains us the oil price and you know uh, the happenings around in the political arena so when did our suez crisis start when the iranian revolution started and what was oil shocks during Iran Iraq war, the shock peaked. And then the Gulf War, there was one small peak. So now in 9-11, there was one peak. And now, of course, in 2008, the crisis was there, world uh, crisis, uh, market crashes. During that time, it peaked. So now again, oil prices today are $122. So I don't know how many months it will stay in 120 range. So we will have to just see how the 
regrets go from here. I think this is the last slide of this. So thank you very much for all the people who wanted to know about Rig Zero and in one shot, in 30 minutes, everything covered because obviously we are not covering it to that kind of great detail, but obviously you will have a brief idea about what rigs are all about. Thank you very much and you please follow the quality health and safety concepts channel, QHSC concepts. We will bring out more such videos which are very, very informative and you know, which can for the people who are engineering students, uh, you know, these, these kind of videos are very, very helpful to understand everything that is out there. Thank you very much. Goodbye.